Oh. Hi there. We're standing in the Toledo Cemetery in Toledo, Oregon. It is a little town nestled off of Highway 20, about seven miles inland from the Pacific Ocean on the central Oregon coast. And I'm standing here at the Graham Spire. Uh, Rebecca Graham and her little granddaughter were the first burials here in this cemetery back in 1871. This cemetery was actually the Graham family um, lot. I'm not sure, well, they were, they had a house up the hill a little way, so it was just part of their land, I guess. Um, and they started burying their family. They have clearly distinct uh, three or four family plots around here. This spire represents Rebecca, the wife and mother, and two of her daughters, a granddaughter, and John Graham on the backside here. John Graham was her husband, and also the founder of Toledo, which I'm gonna talk about in just one minute. Real quickly, I wanna make sure that I set these dried flowers on Rebecca's grave, uh, because as you all know, I really love to honor the very first pioneers of the communities if I can, and Rebecca was obviously a founding mother. So I'm standing on the other side of the spire with John Graham. He and his son, Joseph, came over here in 1866 and utilized the Homestead, Homestead Act to acquire some land around here, quite a bit of land, actually. And he also was, you know, well, he was the founder of the town. So he, he named streets and he named bills, buildings and businesses and he kind of made this town what it became um, in the beginning. And they named Toledo, Oregon after Toledo, Ohio because their family actually came from Ohio and they named, them, named this city after a major city nearby where they lived. And um, their family was prominent in the community for many, many years. His, um, the, the first postmaster of the city was William Mackey, who um, I think he was a son-in-law. I think that's how that worked. Um, but he was part of the Graham family. And an interesting fact of this cemetery was part, part, a portion of the cemetery was in their backyard, but so was their yard continued, or their land continued over the road that's in there now, the Arcadia Road. And when they put the road through, the family actually had to disinter family members and move them down into the cemetery proper um, back in the 30s. And or actually before that, I'm sorry, back in the early 1900s. And then um, at that time, Elizabeth owned the property and she, when she, she got old and ready to go, she left the property to the St. John's Church in 1912. And they in turn turned it over to Cemetery Corporation shortly after that and um, then in 1927, the other portions of the cemetery were acquired. And it has been ran by volunteers ever since that time. It's continued to run by volunteers. And I volunteered here in my early days as a high school student. And it did not look like this. It was very overrun and it was, you know, quote unquote creepy. And today I am I'm just knocked out at how beautiful it looks because the volunteers in recent years have done a phenomenal job. They've uncovered tons of graves and, or headstones rather, and just made everything so beautiful. They've limbed up the trees and they've, you know, just, they've just done a great job in honoring this cemetery. I'm really pleased to be here.
We are standing here at Mary Harrison's grave and Mary Harrison was a high school teacher at Toledo High School and then she had a, well after she passed, the city chose to dedicate an elementary school in her honor and we had Mary Harrison Elementary School here for many years. I was actually, I went to school there for a couple of years and it is and my, my siblings did and you know all my friends and all that but um probably 12 years ago or so i'll have to check the dates and i'll put it up on the screen but um the school got shut down and now it's being used as an outpatient therapy center for people of all ages so it's still a place of joy and growth so i think that still is a great honor to mary harrison and in her honor, I wanted to leave her some fresh wildflowers. I picked these from my garden. We have a rose and pineapple sage and mint and dusty miller and some, some flowers. And I just felt like this is fun and cheery. And as a school teacher, I'm sure that um, she was too. So put those there. So this is the headstone of Mrs. T.P. Fish and from my research all I could find on T.P. Fish is he was possibly a Civil War soldier but I couldn't find anything else about where he was or how they ended up in Toledo but what I did find was Mrs. T.P. Fish and she's called Mrs. T.P. Fish everywhere and um, this headstone says Ida, so wife of T.P. Fish. Um, she ran the dry goods market on Main Street in Toledo and was there for a long time. Um, well, the ads say that she was there for a long time, but the headstone says she's only 28 years old when she died. So maybe in the 1880s, a long time was different than what a long time is today. <laughs> but I have found quite a few different articles re referencing her, um, her dry goods store and the store on Main Street and ads in the newspaper, in the local newspaper, um, you know, flour on sale for eight cents a pound or something like that. It was really fun to see. So um, I just wanted to point that out. It was, Kind of awesome in the late 1800s for a woman to be running a store um, in the main part of town and you know she was the hub that's where you went to get all of your clothing and your dry goods your jams your jellies your flowers your you know nails and hammers and all that kind of stuff were there too so it's kind of cool
So we're standing here at the Crosno family plot, and this is C.B. Crosno. He was a city judge uh, back when he was alive, and looks like he died in 1917, so pretty early on when this city had a judge. <laughs> 